Hey there, this is Katherine Cartwright. Welcome. I'm going to be making a shaped card today. It is Halloween time um, at my house, and so I have been making a bunch of Halloween inspired cards and projects. I'm going to be using this die from Stamps of Life. It is in the shape of a candy corn. I think you can see that pretty easily. And uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this. So I took a piece of cardstock and folded it in half. You can see at the top that there's a little bit knot in the cutting area. And so when I pull this apart, I'm going to have a hinged card, a shaped card. And so then I'm going to cover that little um, kind of cut out at the top uh, because it's kind of a harsh edge. So I've got a piece of white cut. I went and ran that through again my die cutting machine, but I changed my mind and decided to, to do it black as well. Um, so I would have a nice contrast with my candy corn pieces. So here is that piece. So I just cut a second piece and that will go on top of my folded card. And I do that on all of my foldits. Um, I know there are a lot of them. And so I just do that on each of mine. I always plan to cut the main card base and then I cut, go back and cut the topper, so to speak. Um, this, this die set originally came with some of those little pop-outs I was just showing you with the dots. I did not use those. I just ran mine through and kept it um, just as it was from the die cut. And then I'm going to layer these onto my black cardstock. So I'm going to get a nice contrast uh, against those colors. And so I'm just taking a second here and getting them laid out. I've got that top, top piece, the white piece that I want to um, have it where it should go. And so I'm gonna glue that to the top and then I can kind of nestle in the other pieces. Uh, you could leave a little space if you wanted to in between, there is room for that. Um, you still got space on the side, but I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of put them as close as I can. And they cut pretty well and so they nestle up pretty nicely. So I'm gonna glue this orange piece and then I will put the yellow at the bottom. And then I can go to finishing, work on finishing this card. So you could just stop here. You could stamp a sentiment like a big happy Halloween or um, something like that. But I'm going to add a few little embellishments to this. I also love the box it die. Um, I'll link some videos in my description these shaped cards are great for the box that die uh, piece where you can turn any of your foldits into a treat box. So that's always a fun thing to do. So I've got this die from Diamond Press that I want to use for the front of my candy corn foldit. And I'm going to run this through my marquee. And then I will add some glue to that. It's a very intricate die and the marquee um, definitely takes care of business. So you can see a lot of these little pieces pop out and then it's just very easy uh, to come out. I've got a recent video where I did a review on that little die cut machine. I get a lot of questions about it um, in my videos and so I finally got around to doing a review, a pretty comprehensive review. I've had the machine for at least a year, probably two years, um, but anyway you should check that out if you're interested in a smaller die cutting machine that is tabletop without a motor. It is great and I highly recommend it. So you can see it easily took care of that tis the season to be spooky. I've got this little kitty cat here that I started coloring that I want to add to my fold it, but I need to finish the hat. I didn't get to that. So I've got some tri-blend markers here. They're great um, for this kind of application, a little small thing. I have the larger or the, they're the same size, but I have the brush ones that have the brush nibs. I don't tend to use those as much. I like them. Um, I just like this firmer nib on these smaller things. I just have a little bit more control. Um, and I still use mostly my Copics and then these um, nib, what I would call nib uh, traplin markers. And so I'm just using that middle color and then I will do the lightest shade. But I've really enjoyed them. They have a lot of different colors to choose from and different sets. And I feel like they're pretty affordable. So I highly recommend those as well. They're fun to color with. And then I'm going to come back here and add a little bit more of shadow. 
You could go and add like a gray or something too to darken that up, but I like the way that it looks. And then I need to add the uh, center piece. I'm looking for a purple marker here. I'm going to use the light and the dark. And I'm going to use that for uh, kind of the band, I guess you would say, that goes around my uh, little cat's hat. So cute. Add that little darker color. And then I'll come back and blend in that lighter color. So when you go back with the lighter, it kind of bleaches out the darker. And that's how you get a blend. And then you want to let it sit and let it do its work. Um, if you don't like the way something looks initially, give it a second with alcohol markers. You have to kind of be patient with those. And I'm trying to find the gray that I used. Uh, there's several awesome grays in these sets. And I finally found the one, the brown. I can see there's a definite brown tone in there. And so I'm going to finish up the little kitty cat ears. I'm going to do the lightest in the center. And then I'll do the darkest for the ears. So I get a little bit of a contrast. And then I can die cut this little critter to add to my candy corn folded. Okay, so I, I found the die. I had to look for the die, of course. <laughs> I'm a messy crafter. I know I've, I've said that a lot. If you've ever watched my videos, um, it may look like I have some idea what I'm doing, but honestly, I really don't. Um, I, I kind of have an idea, but then finding stuff sometimes can be a challenge. I'm such a mess. Um, but I'm going to blame it on the creative side of me. <laughs> All right, I'm back with this Tis the Season to be Spooky dye, and I want to cut that pumpkin another color. I was initially going to do it orange, and then I decided no, because it would just blend right into that orange. And so I'm going to run these through my marquee again. And then I will do a little tiny bit of fussy cutting around the pumpkin to add it to my Tis is the Season to be Spooky. This cute little dye is from Diamond Press. It was a freebie uh, with an order um, maybe a month or so ago, and I have loved it. It has been, I love the size of it. It's just great, and it cuts like a dream. Okay, there's my little kitty cat that is ready for the card. And then I'm going to trim around my green pumpkin here to add a little bit of contrast. And it's just very simple. I'm just going to kind of move the paper uh, and kind of go around where I feel like it is going to cut off um, and look good. And so then I will layer that back onto my little pumpkin friend. You could add any color you wanted. You could add some glitter cardstock. I thought about some glitter cardstock, but I didn't have a green that I liked. Everything I had was more Christmas color green, and I wanted this kind of lime color for that. And so I will um, glue this down now. I got to pop out one little eye that didn't pop out. And I will clean that off and then add a little bit of my glue to the back. And so I enjoy paper piecing on little dies like this. It's fun. Okay. I'm happy where the glue is. And then um, I will, off camera, I'll add the glue to the back. This would be a great die to use an adhesive sheet if you have one it's um, so delicate but I use this fine tip glue and so I'm able to get the adhesive on there pretty easily and so I'm going to take this off and add my glue and then I'm going to figure out exactly where I want my little kitty cat to go this card is an A2 sized card it will fit in an A2 sized envelope and so um, I'm just making sure that my kitty cat isn't hanging off too much to where I won't be able to fit it in that envelope. Okay, so I like where that is. I'm going to give it a press and go around and finish pressing down any of these pieces that I may have missed. And I thought I had a little piece of um, paper in there, but I didn't. So that's why I was bringing that pokey tool over. I thought I had missed a little piece of it but it was okay. All right, so let me add some foam to my kitty, and then I'll have one more thing I'm gonna add to finish off this card. And I'm gonna add a couple of foam squares to the back. I will pop that up, and then I'm gonna find a couple of bats from a couple of different sets, and I wanted to add those to my card as well to have kind of some a trio of three 
with the uh, cat and the two bats to kind of round out my spooky card, my spooky candy corn card. Okay. All right. I'm still deciding where I want that kitty to go. I just really like him on the left hand side there. So that is where he is going to sit. Okay, and here are those bats that I was referencing. I pulled out a couple of older Stamps of Life sets, some Halloween ones, and I found two different bats. I'm just going to run through um, those. My die cut machine, I had some of that scrap paper from where I die cut earlier. And so I'm just going to use up two more little bits of that. And then I will be ready to add this to my card. You could add some glitter glue to your bats if you wanted to, or you could use a glitter paper. I think that would have been cute as well. I've used up a lot of my black glitter paper this year. I had a Halloween video I did, um, 22 cards, and I used some glitter paper for that, so I've gotten kind of low on my black glitter paper. So I'll have to add that to my future purchase list. Okay, so there are my two bats ready to be added and I decide that I'm going to add some foam to them instead of gluing them directly onto my card and then um, I got to trim these just a little bit they're a little too large for what I want so I'm just going to take them to my scissors and give a little snip and a pull and I've got a couple of um, smaller pieces that I can add and I have an extra piece there and then I will add this on and that will be it for this card. My foam moved a little bit, so I'm just pushing that down. I'm gonna add that there. So you could have a lot of fun with this candy corn folded if you have it. Um, you may already have this in your craft room. Maybe um, you'd be inspired to create a fun little card for Halloween. It's coming up. I've also turned this into a 4th of July. Candy corn, you could use this as an autumn candy corn just by changing the colors. You may have seen those in the store, the autumn color. And then you'll notice I didn't put a bunch of glue at the tippy top of my cardstock that I'm gluing on because there's not any going to be any cardstock there to receive that adhesive. So you can see I just kind of left that off, but um, that way I don't have any extra glue that I don't need. But look, it stands up. How cute. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and a share if you like it with a friend. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.